five, four, three, two, one, fire. The Cold War saw a lot of nuclear weapons testing by the US, Soviet Union, UK, France, and others. The US did much of their early testing at Bikini Atoll in the South Pacific. The Soviets chose a remote part of what's now Kazakhstan. The story of Bikini Atoll is not a proud one for the US. Local residents there were shuffled inexpertly around nearby islands before the testing, and many were still exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. But as embarrassing as that episode is for the US, it's nothing compared to what happened in Kazakhstan. In 1949, the Soviet Union detonated their very first atomic bomb in an area called Semipalatinsk, known locally as the Polygon. The region was roughly the size of New Jersey, and according to one of the program's architects, it was uninhabited. As it turns out, that claim was off by about 1.5 million people. It's hard to know whether the Soviet military was simply callous in its choice of test site, or downright sinister. There are reports of villagers being instructed to step outside their homes before detonations, so that the effect of radiation exposure could later be studied. Either way, for 40 years, from 1949 to 1989, the Soviets detonated nuke after nuke here, as many as 456 of them. That's so many that the explosions became almost commonplace for some villagers. Almost every day, recalled one woman, announcements on the radio at noon would say, now there is going to be a test of nuclear weapons. Everything would shake, the windows in my classroom were shattered by the shockwave from one of the blasts. All these tests laid waste to the environment. Rivers and water sources were contaminated, farmland was tainted, and the people began to suffer almost immediately. Cancer rates skyrocketed, as did mental disabilities, infertility, depression, and harrowing birth defects. All in all, around 200,000 people are believed to have suffered directly from radiation. The weapons testing finally ceased with the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989, but the shadow cast by the program remains long. To this day, 1 in 20 children born in the Polygon area suffer deformities. The suicide rate is four times the national average. And then there's the fact that when the site closed, Russia essentially just walked away, leaving untold amounts of radioactive material behind. The towns in and around the Polygon were poor enough that scavenging metal from the old facilities became commonplace, further subjecting locals to radiation. The United States caught wind of this and launched a massive effort with Russia and Kazakhstan to secretly clean up the test site a mission that wasn't finished until 2012. The moral of this story, as if it needs one, is that nuclear testing can leave a mark on a place for generations. The residents of Bikini Atoll still understand this, and Kazakhstan understands it maybe best of all. So well, in fact, that the country has helped lead the charge to ratify the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. The treaty calls for nothing less than a worldwide end to all nuclear detonations, though it won't go into effect until it's ratified by all 44 of the key nations who created it. Russia, notably, has ratified the treaty, perhaps with the memory of the Polygon fiasco still fresh. And in fact, today there are only eight holdouts. China, Egypt, Iran, Israel, India, Pakistan, North Korea, and the United States. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. We're putting out new stories from around the world all the time. And thanks for watching.